In this video, I'm going to walk through some decompositions of different time series. Uh, so the first two are shown in the textbook, and then we'll do a few others uh, using some of the data sets from the non-stationarity video. So the first data set is this one of uh, international air passengers in, measured in thousands. Um, that's measured monthly. Um, so we can see there's this upward trend, sort of getting bigger over time. There's also this seasonal variation. I think the peak is somewhere around July, something in the summer. Um, and so if we decompose it, the idea is we want to separate out that sort of overall upward trend from the yearly seasonal ups and downs and then see what's left over. So first we can do an additive decomposition. I'll make this a little bigger. So if we do an additive decomposition, this top part where it says observe, that's just the raw data that we were just looking at before. Trend Again, just trying to capture the overall sort of general upward movement. So you see it's a very smooth line. It's trying not to include any of this seasonal variation or just idiosyncratic differences. And the seasonal component, uh, in this case, because it's an additive decomposition, uh, the units of the seasonal component are the same as the units of the observed data. So in this case, thousands of passengers per month. And you can see the seasonal component just repeats the same exact pattern every single year. So it does not have any change over time. And then finally, the bottom part is just whatever is left over so that when we add the trend plus the seasonal component plus the random component or the remainder, that will equal the observed data. Uh, and so in this case, since it's an additive decomposition, the random component here also has the same units as the observed data, which is thousands of passengers per month. Now we can see the, you know, despite being labeled random, this series down here does not really look random, right? We still see this sort of up and down uh, pattern. It sort of flattens out and then sort of reverses over here. Um, the reason for that is that we've picked an additive decomposition when pretty clearly a multiplicative decomposition would be much more appropriate. Um, since you can see here, as the trend is getting higher, as the level gets higher, these peaks get higher because they're uh, basically a peak as a percentage of the level rather than just a fixed, you know, plus 40 in every period. So we can redo this with a multiplicative decomposition and it'll look a little more reasonable. Uh, again, the random part still doesn't look stationary uh, to say the least, um, but it's an improvement at least. Now here for the multiplicative decomposition, um, again the observed series is identical to before. Uh, the trend is basically is, is the same also. The seasonal and random components though now have different units. So instead of being thousands of passengers, now it's a multiplicative factor. So before, in the additive one, it said that at the peak, sort of add 43,000 passengers to the trend. Whereas now for the multiplicative, it's saying at the peak, take the trend and multiply by 1.2 sort of add 20% bump for those summer months where there's higher travel. Um, and then similarly down here, this would be multiply by 0.88 uh, 
or take 88% of that trend. And then similarly for the random component, 0.9 would be sort of the 90% of the level it would otherwise be. A one is just the same. Um, so you can see the seasonal component sort of goes up and down around one, because if you had a value of one, it would just keep you right on the trend line. Um, so we've already seen the, the CO2 decomposition in the book, so I'll skip that one. Uh, we'll look at a couple more from this FPP package in R. Uh, so one first one, we can look at the US uh, monthly electricity. And if we do a multiplicative decomposition, uh, usually multiplicative is more appropriate than not always. Um, we see here the observed data was this sort of upward trending and clearly seasonal um, data. And so here the trend tries to extract just that upward moving part. So it's relatively smooth looking, not a lot of ups and downs. And then the seasonal component, again here it's multiplicative. Um, so this up here is maybe around you know, 1.15. says, okay, in the summer, sort of a 15% extra electricity usage. Um, whereas in the you know, lower months, it's maybe down at 94% of the trend. And it sort of goes up and down within each calendar year. And then this random part is sort of once you take the trend and you multiply by the seasonal component, um, then you compare that to the true observed outcome value. Uh, the random component shows what you need to multiply by again to recover the original data. So in other words, if you take the trend, whose units are the same units as the observed data, take the trend, multiply by the seasonal component from that period, and then multiply by the random component for that same period, that equals the observed value. Um, we can do Two more here. So here's the Australian beer production again. If you remember, there's initially some upward trend and then uh, always lots of seasonality. And so the decomposition can help separate out those different parts. So here we see just that upward trend and then the sort of flat trend after that, uh, separate from the seasonal up and down movement and it's multiplicative. So this is what you'd multiply the trend by. And then finally the random component um, here actually does look kind of random more or less. Um, and finally here's the uh, US growth as a percent in personal disposable income. Um, so you can see this is the one from the uh, non-stationary video where there wasn't really any clear non-stationarity. And we can see in this case, the decomposition doesn't really seem to give us too much insight. If we look at this component that's called trend, uh, it's just still going up and down a lot. It's a little bit smoother than the raw data, but um, there isn't really any clear trend that's getting extracted here. Um, it's just sort of flat and going up and down a lot. Uh, similarly, the, the seasonal component, um, it's hard to see the scale here, but these are all very, um, not very uh, helpful here. I should point out this is an additive uh, decomposition again, so it's centered around zero, not one. Um, so this minus 0 0.057, um, that's a very small 
amount compared to the scale up here, which goes from negative one to over three. Um, so there's really not, you know, it looks like it's going up and down, but when you look at the scale on the, the axis, it's um, basically a negligible amount. Um, and so then the random part is, is very similar to just the original observation because there wasn't much of a trend and there wasn't much seasonality. So I hope you enjoyed looking at those uh, example decompositions.